Welcome to Euro Sea Sucks, the weekly podcast where we review and critique the best and the worst fan created original characters from the My Little Pony fandom. This show is unscripted and unfiltered, so moderate language will be used. As well, this show can be a little heavy on the critique at times. That being said, if you were easily offended, don't watch. If not, feel free to join us for this week's show. This is episode 37 for November 14th, 2014. This week, we are coming off of our big pony species block and going to relax into our sixth fan submitted episode. The ponies shown here are not all attached to a theme, but are just ponies that were submitted and sitting in our inbox. My name is Mummified Thunderbirds. I am the host and show manager. I am joined by Commander Sparkle, assistant project manager. I am Eddie Bobo. I'm in charge of gathering questions of viewer interaction. And I'm Smooth Sailing. And I'm the editor. Like I said, so we're doing another fan submitted episode this week. Uh, once again, if you ever feel like you want to see what kind of uh, ponies we have available uh, that are sitting in our inbox, you can always find them on our uh, favorites folder on our DA profile. That's the uh, fan submitted OCs, and you can see what is still waiting to be submitted or what kind of ponies are out there that we have access to that fans have submitted to us. Hence the name fan submitted OCs in our favorites folder. Um as for news this week, I just got done uh, helping out at the Tucson Comic Con, where I actually got to meet uh, Alien Kitty Coon again. Uh, she's a local brony artist, merchant, person, chick. Real cool lady. Uh, great being able to talk to her and hang out with her. Um, I spent most of the weekend volunteering and helping out. And it's weird because I sat there and I did probably 11-hour days. And I'm just like, yep. Okay, uh, I've been working since 9.30 and going until about 8.39. Okay, well, wow, that did not feel like 12 hours at all. It's just like, hmm, look at that. I've been working all day. That's weird. Hmm, oh well. But while if I was actually doing that at work, it's like, oh, pff, well, get me the fuck out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. Um, but yeah, I've really decided, I've really like come to light that I love volunteering at conventions especially small ones um but yeah that's pretty much been my news i got a haircut today and went to a local wrestling show it was interesting the main event was nice and the haircut was decent i didn't get like an actual cut cut i got it more of like a trim so it's still like long hair but it, it's now like the comfortable length that i really like and not like the old length i had which was way too fucking long now, is it, like, about what you had at Everfree, or...? Yeah, maybe a little bit shorter. Ah, I see. So last week we had our live episode, which I think went over very well, considering everything that had to go into it. Um, way better than expected. <laughs> yeah, it's way better. I really like how it worked out. Um, we'll probably try to do it again sometime, maybe. I don't know. But as it stands right now, thanks for everybody again for coming out to that. That was... A blast. We hope to do it again. Uh, but since we did do our live uh, episode last week, we weren't able to do fan art last week. So that means we get to do almost like a double header of fan art this week. So uh, Xenolali did a Halloween piece. Man, wow, we have been away from Halloween for so long. God, we got a we got so much stuff after Halloween. It's been two weeks since we've talked about this. All right. But anyway, so, yeah, she did a Halloween piece for us and it looks great. There's the, you know, my tacky outfit. Commander's. Oh, yeah. so tacky. Twi- it's super tacky. It's frighteningly tacky. And then Commander, you as Twilight and Medi as yeah. Tron John and Smooth as his favorite pony ever. It's a, your favorite pony ever. Don't lie. Don't try to hide from that. Don't hide from your feelings. Best pony? Yeah. <laughs> no. For you, maybe. Anyway, uh, I think it's a great piece. It's really, I think, was a nice way to, nice way to put like a little fi- final stamp on our Halloween stuff. Uh, what did you guys think? It was great. Yeah. I mean. There's a there's a lot of fan art I really like. I think uh, Jelly Bray has been uh, spoiling us recently. Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So Love much. pad. Yeah, I saw that. Favorite ship name. <laughs> but uh, 
Like I, I think my favorite thing by uh, probably just in general is the uh, the one with all four of us just like lined up next to each other holding our ponies. Oh yeah, that one's super cute. Super fucking cute. It really makes it obvious that I am the only one here that doesn't wear glasses or doesn't need glasses. Or have and long hair. And doesn't have long hair. Yeah, that too. I'm just like, I there there is always an odd man out for all things. It's like okay, unicorn smooths out, long hair mummifies out, glasses mummifies out, tall mummifies in. Uh, we also got a. I also really enjoyed this one piece, uh, Medi a Bobo. If people don't know who a Bobo is. Uh, go play some Double Dragon. Okay. I I don't know who that is. <laughs> I guess yeah, I gotta go, go play, play some, some Double, Double Dragon. Dragon then. Apparently. And since everyone's expecting me to talk about it anyway, let's talk about the piece of Smooth's eyebrows. Yeah. <sighs> Except the fact that they're not eyebrows, they're part of my mane. Whatever worst, are you talking about? Worst joke, 2015 ZD. Uh, I enjoy the eyebrows joke. I dislike that joke very much. I'm sorry. I dislike all this, jokes. This comic, this comic is funny. Yes. I hate that joke. <laughs> oh. I specifically like the shaven eyebrows. <laughs> like, would it look like this? Or like this? It would They're be obviously the, weapons. It would be the former, most likely. Okay. So, public service here, people. This is what... This is how the thing would be. This is what Smooth would dictate if... He had control over what the fans thought of his ponies, but unfortunately, he doesn't. There's also another one we got from the real Twilight Sparkle that was uh, me and Mummified being fi- fighting for some reason with magic around us. I don't exactly know the story here. Do we? Oh, yeah, look at that. Would you look at that? Hey, look at that. I think that's us. Yeah, that's us? We, if if you read if you read it, we got turned into foals or colts. No, no, I think that's me and mummified. Actually, no, that's be... commander and mummified. Why am I the one hiding like that then? I have no idea. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it would make a little bit more sense if it was Medi because I feel those two fight a lot more. Also, there's another mummified piece with him sliding into a box. It's so cute. <laughs> but he's not cute. He's handsome. handsome. No, he's cute. I mean, just look at that adorable little mustache. Look at that grumpy face. So, so grumpy. Angry. But but yeah, we got a lot of really, really good fan art this week. Unfortunately, we have not the time to a lot of stuff. So I We will... got a lot of good fan art this week and last week. Yeah, so I'll be putting as much fan art on the screen as I can. I'm sorry that it's not like... Oh, look, all this fan art. We can't, like, just talk about all of it all the time. Yes. But we still appreciate it all the same. So, moving into the actual episode, I'm going to roll the die of fate and see what comes up. So, here it goes. Right now. Look at me go. Right now. All right. I can't look at you. Do it! I rolled a three. So, that means we start with many. God damn it. Medi, who do we have this week for your good OC? That's how I felt well, alive. I brought to the table Pathfinder Bravehoof. Pathfinder is a little headstrong pony with a permanent bitch face. Actually in the description. But I think her face is adorable. So, But uh, she was uh, she used to be a uh, magical student. A student. Eh. A student. A person studying magic. Fucking Christ. Way to go, Mandy. Uh, and, uh, but her, uh, her father was an adventurer. While her mother wasn't really an adventurer, she was kind of like a stay-at-home mom. So her dad would disappear for, uh, days on end, and she would, uh, she didn't like it when her dad was away, so she would, like, break shit and act, of, act up and, uh, get in lots of trouble because she wanted her dad back. And, uh, when, when her dad would come back, he would tell her stories about his adventures and walk her to the woods and, like, take her into the woods for a little bit and walk her back home, and then he would go away to his adventures. But one day, he didn't come back. And that drove her wild, and she went running into the woods, and, uh, after a while, she calmed down and found her way back, and, uh, I believe that's how she got her cutie mark. 
because she's really good at directions. And uh, when she came back, uh, she started to get more, uh, more rambunctious and rebellious, and it's kind of she wanted to live in the name of her dad. So uh, after a while, her mom realized that magical studies isn't the life for an adventurer. So she kicked her out of her house. And, uh, at first, uh, Pathfinder wasn't too happy about this, like, fucking what the hell? This is my house. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I, gotta, I can go live out my adventures. And she went out and started adventuring. Yay! And now she's, like, more, like, she's very cold to most ponies. She's not, she's, she can, can be considered stubborn and strong. Yeah. Headstrong and stubborn. And easily too upset. And, uh. She's very good at exploration and ex- and pathfinding, I guess, is uh, a layman's terms for that. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, when talking to others, she doesn't really take feelings into mind, so she's very uh, forward about whatever she's trying to say, which I like. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't like to be stuck studying. Yeah, cause fuck that so shit. Then, so then, does that mean that uh, she always takes the most direct route to somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Or to some point. That's like, Unless she's getting paid. You gotta take then you the take the most route. obscure path. You gotta take the scenic route. Now, the only thing I don't like about this character is uh, the fact that the way they describe the cutie mark, I would have preferred it if it was like... Because they could easily just add this in as like a little side note. It's, 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 uh, it represents... Her cutie mark is a compass. It symbolizes both her love for adventure and exploring and her bond with her father. Which, fine... I'll give you that, but just also make it about her job of, just make it so she's really, like, good at, f- like, she has a natural calendar, or, nat- yeah, national calendar. National a calendar? A natural compass. Like, that'd be cool. I love this OC. What do you guys think of her? She seems pretty good. I'm, I think she's adorable. I'm <laughs> generally not a fan of that character archetype, but. I am. <laughs> It seems we she got stuck in it through her father's way. So, understandable how she got it, at least. Hmm. Give it the USA modified? I kind of do, because... So, the whole... does The front color scheme of, like, her That's, front hooves. Yeah. Does that... That's the only thing I kind of have a problem with. Did you say does that like does that like is that is that a thing you guys can see too? Or, no. No. Does <laughs> that mean, like explain <laughs> or a reason behind it or like something else that like gives it? It's not even mentioned. Just, I yeah. don't believe so. No. Because that's like really like. Does it have to be an important part to her character? No, but I if it explains like it, it, it could if be. If it's a pony, see, it's it's very off-putting because it's strange and different and it helps to explain because it just seems weird and kind of arbitrary and pointless to even have it exactly i I agree with that point however i'm going to say a different point that i only somewhat agree with for various reasons um i kind of like the fact it wasn't explained because usually when things like that are explained they aren't explained very well and then we're just like <sighs> but how does that even you I don't mean, you're I not guess but <sighs> so i kind of like how it just wasn't mentioned and the person's just like yeah she has that what's it matter i'm still not a fan of it but yeah i just, I just find least, it at least they didn't try to put in some half-assed explanation and, yeah i like it on her eyes though like, that definitely gives me, like, the, I'm so done with you right now. I'm so tired. I don't want to talk to you. Mm, I only get that when it's under the eyes. If it's, like, all on the eyes, it's just kind of weird. But under the eyes, it's just, like... <sighs> yeah, that's just, like, bags under the eyes. All the time, the all eye. the time. But, yeah, I mean, that's the only real complaint I have. Um, it, it, it's just just because, it, for me personally it is a bit off-putting how, it, like, it goes from this, like, very light, basically white color scheme to this gray that just gets darker at the, like, at the hooves, and... You see... 
because of that, I have another problem with it. How do you? I don't like how the green and the gray go together. Hmm. Man, I sounded no, so all triumphant of... with that. What the hell? Yeah, kind of uh, weird. All of the gray, or yeah. just... I'm not a fan of the dark gray, the one more attributed to gray, whereas the lighter one, I suppose, is almost slight. Very close to slight, I think. Because I, I think, like, if you look at the part on sort of her front chest on the uh, reference picture where, where, next to the main, I think that's okay. Mm, Better, at least. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. it. It probably just looks weird because of the two grays going against each other. Yeah. And then throwing the green into that, and I'm just like, mm-mm. Uh, mm, mm, I think she mm. looks fine. I think it could be uh, done better. The coloring definitely seems sort of <laughs> iffy, so to speak. I don't, I don't know how to contextualize it better than that, but if... I think if it was more of a quote-unquote finished product, it could probably be a little bit better. As it sits right now, it's very sketchy, and you can see the under sketches about it, and not a lot of uh, finality to this character. So, well, I think it's just because it she she has room to grow, she has room to expand, she of has course. paths to find. She has it, oh, it was all going up to that, wasn't it? You son of a bitch! You knew about it beforehand. <laughs> That felt yeah. fake as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> yours don't? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's anyway. be honest, mummified. But I think it's <gasps> definitely a very much more horse of a potty than anything else. Like, it's not very show style, but that's nothing. there's oh, yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's just the fact that it's a very much more horse-like, especially with that back leg. Yeah, those back legs are very horse. Those Those are pretty horsey legs. Uh, I like this character's design-wise, and I think she looks really cute. Please change the cutie mark to have something to do with her job. Fantastic, Mitty. Uh, moving on to the next one. That's another three again. That's a one, so that means I get to go next. Aw, I wanted uh, Mitty to go again. Ah, uh, so, too bad. Um, this week, I brought in Crescent Star by Butterscotch. Now, Crescent Star is... Kind of reminds me a lot about uh, Commander, actually, on his personal side. Uh, he is a very uh, knowledge-based pony. He's always got his head buried in books and spell books and other things, notes and whatnot, trying to perfect and get potions uh, ready and doing. Uh, the <clears throat> Even if it means that he's got to, like, uses friends, quote-unquote friends, as guinea pigs. Uh, he's very... He's not very sociable, but he is very, like, active. He's always got his nose in a book, or uh, he if he is walking around town. Um, also, there's not a lot of uh, people that know about him very much. They, he, he's kind of an enigma, but not like that whole lone uh, wanderer kind of enigma. Like, people know him, and he's not, like, distant or, you know, un caring about other people so but he like is me. yeah i was gonna yes. say so he's a smooth enigma yeah exactly so, so he's a mix of me and commander yes, commander's but, brain and my ability to not be uh so he and he lives he actually lives in uh philadelphia actually uh that's philly delphia by the way just in case you didn't catch that pun if you catch it it's anyway not it's not new mummified. I know it's not, but it, it just I need to put a little bit more accent onto that pun. If you know what I mean, you know how to speak and find out these things. But anyway, so um, his main job is that he sells potions and whatnot, uh, trying to make the best potions, test those potions on his friends. If you people who didn't know who he was uh, would call him, would say that the information that they know about him would be that he likes magic and brewing potions. And then that would be it. Um, 
He really likes will-o'-wisps and is commonly seen with them, especially in the dark or at night. And his house is filled with them, so it says. And when I first read that uh, will-o'-wisps, I thought I, I thought it said just willow. Like, he, he loves willows, like willow trees. And he's got them in his house. I'm like, wait, wait, what? He's got willow trees in his house? That doesn't make sense. His house actually is located um, near Philadelphia, or the wood, or the every free forest by Philadelphia. But he, even though he himself kind of just showed up in town and people just started noticing him around, uh, his house they think was there before he got to Philadelphia, you know, or but they they don't they think it was before, or maybe it arrived they. They just don't know if it came before or after the pony. Um, one of the things is that he doesn't show any emotion of fear. So I find that interesting as well. But what I find most interesting is that he lures customers to his potion shop through illusions and whatnot. Um, I find this character to be very interesting, especially with the uh, color scheme and the uh, backstory. Um, I really like the uh, inclusion of yellow and blue, or I'm sorry, not yellow and blue, yellow and purple, which are uh, co- complements of each other, yes. which yes. is very nice. I love the fact that it is a very nice pastel purple, a little bit deeper, more uh, real purple in the mane, and then a nice cream in the uh, uh, streaks in his hair, while the cutie mark has a much has a plum purple and a kind of a gold and ecru in the cutie mark, and, and the the eyes are the only like third color in this whole thing, and it's very nice like fuchsia deep reddish purple, which I think is a great uh, little bit they can throw in, uh, keeping it from a cooler bluer purple and more into a deeper redder purple which I absolutely love. What exactly are defined will-o'-wisps? Because will-o'-wisps are bringing five different definitions and five different hell-ton things. Yeah. What exactly are they in this case? I think they're the little blue spirit things, or they could be like the little candles in jars or something. I don't, I don't know. It, I, it doesn't say exactly what he defines as will o wisps. I think it's just going off the assumption that they're like the little like spirit things that kind yeah, of float like through spirits. the forest. Hmm. Not necessarily I, I, always blue, but yeah, it's the most likely. However, I would maybe state that a little bit more clearly. Yeah. For the yellow in the mane, I feel that it reminds me a lot of the yellow that is in Twilight's mane when with her uh, rainbow power. I, it's a little bit. I, I think it's a little bit more saturated. I'm not exactly sure. Yellows. I, it's hard for me to determine exactly how yellow is, but I feel like that's a similar yellow, which would be a possible reason why. Or like, I mean, well, yeah, of course they're complementary and all that stuff, but I, like it's sort of that's what it reminded me of. Except for, and the coat is even a little bit like Twilight's, honestly. Some of that lavendery purple. Um, which I, I think those colors work together. I'm not as keen about how the yellow works with the other purple in the main. Like, I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how to describe what I what problems I have with it. I'm just not a huge fan. I feel like they, they clash a little bit much. Might just be me. The yellow and the purple? In the main, yeah. I, I think they're okay. They're not they're not they're not horrible by any means, but I can see no. your opinion, but I do disagree with it. Yeah. Um I suppose I'm kind of on the fence about being on the fence. Main thing bugging me here, I suppose, is the cutie mark. It's yeah. too yeah. too detailed for me, but um, I'd probably just change the yellow to one color. Um, make maybe make the uh, um, purple part not have dots in it, or uh, be less 
waves. Mm, yeah, just be less, I suppose. Yeah, and I'd make sure that because I noticed there's that one little spot that sort of is like separate, and that it has this weird the part where it connect it like sort of stops at the star and then sort of starts again. I would make it one one amorphous blob instead of what, like kind of parts. That would definitely help. Despite everything that we said, I still believe that's a great uh, character. Uh, it's a lovely uh, piece of work. Definitely kind of shows what the actual talent is, though it doesn't outright just throw it in your face with the cutie mark and whatnot. Um, but yeah, t- these little tweaks can definitely uh, take it from being a, oh, yeah, it's a pretty good character to a, wow, fucking amazing character. Uh, out of everything that I think I've seen from Butterscotch, I think this one actually might be my favorite so far. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see how I feel about that later. But uh, moving on from my OC. Uh, thank you, Mumfight, for bringing it. Oh, no problem. Mumfight, I really appreciate that. We're going to roll a one again. That's good. Another three, and then another three, and then a four. So that means we're moving on to smooth. Okay. So smooth. Who'd you bring in? This is Flora Fawn. Um, she, hilariously enough, I was freaking so close to bringing her on for a uh, unique species. I was just like, ah, do I take this one with not a lot of information or this one with a hell ton of information? It was incredibly up in the air, but obviously I eventually chose Fayette. However, one thing I like here over that one, um, though this one has incredibly simple and very, very easy to understand, thank you so much, uh, species where you can just like, oh yeah, that's how it works. Um, also, it's really freaking cute! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more, 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 more on that later. Um, <laughs> she, uh, her species is a an ever-free plant pony. Um, they are generally earth ponies, and they kind of live in um, specific sections, I think, of the Everfree Forest. Like, mm-hmm. certain plants have certain designated areas. I think that's how I, that's how I read it, understood it. However, another character this person has, has a different plant of the same place. Also, what constitutes the same plant? Because there's so many freaking things that go into plants. Oh my goodness. Anyway... Yeah. Particularly her talent talent is um, growing the specific ceremonial flowers for her village. Um, because ceremonial flowers. Huh. Beautiful things. Especially, especially since they're plant ponies. Flowers for ceremonies and stuff. Why did I not think about that before now? That is one of the most obvious things ever. I am ashamed of myself. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, what do you guys think so far? I think it's I think great. She's really cute. Um, yeah, and I said I know you're gonna get to that in a bit, but I I, th- I also regarding the whole plant thing, I, like just the, like because the cutie mark is basically just that type of plant. I wonder. Does she? Are you born with the cutie mark, and just it, you're? It's gonna have to do something with the plant, or because it just seems strange that if it's. Why would you be born with the cutie mark? No one else is born with the cutie mark. Well, my my point is that, so like the, the the main reason I was just wondering is because it's just the plant, and like if you like if you have. A child would they be the same species or based on that same plant species? And most likely, but what does that have to do with the cutie mark? The fact that the cutie mark is uh, is just the plant. I was just wondering. No, that's because she is most likely of the ceremonial plant. Anyone else could have like whatever, like like the other species she has um, is good at growing and repairing trees and stuff in general, okay. not necessarily a specific plant. Now, I, the, the reason I was wondering was just because the, this specific pony has to do with the plant that is her species. So Yeah. In general, probably works exactly the same as regular okay. cutie marks. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 
I'd probably go off that assumption as well, just because of what it seems like. Uh, I like your colors. Freaking jerk! How <laughs> dare you not let me say that first? I think she's really cute. You both get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. But yeah, she's really freaking cute. Her color palette. I know. I know. There are so many freaking colors. But it's so good. So freaking beautiful. They're all they're so close to being analogous. And then there's... And then there's the... Yeah. Yeah, it's analogous. It all goes off yeah. of yellow. Yellow, yeah. orange, green. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. all goes off yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really freaking good. Yeah. Yeah, and the white works well with also... Because it doesn't like clash against the yellow at all. Because it, it's because the white you're because the yellow is cream, and it works well with white. And the green is probably the most out there color, but it's not bad. It's good. <laughs> uh. Yeah. yeah and the reuse of colors all over this pony. I'm just like, ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. I I just I just want to hug this pony so badly. Oh, freaking goodness, you're so cute. Anything you guys have to say? It's hard to get into like the whole job slash talent of this pony just because the plant pony thing kind of throws a wrench in that so it's like okay so i guess sure well, i don't know it, her job definitely would not be marketable in um any other society but in this specific one it's most likely very very useful mm-hmm. especially she'd kind of be like she'd almost be like a somewhat profit kind of character not not a prophet, but like a prophet's aid or something like that. Yeah, having yeah. to do with the ceremonial process. Yeah. I mean, like you said, I think the colors work pretty well together. It, it, it's I'm not a huge fan of the like gray, but it, 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 Ooh, it's not bad like by any means. Like in the straggly part of the top part of the mane, or like half the tail. Or I think that's just shading. Well, I mean, it, it, in the main like colors, there's one of them is just gray. There's, like, yeah, th- but it's it's supposed it's, to be I'll... a somewhat correct white. I'd say, yeah, I suppose maybe change that gray to a few notches higher. Obviously, not pure white, but. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It almost it, seems like in the highlighted parts it works better. Yeah, like, than... I, honestly, in the hmm. front part of the mane, it's fine. It's, it just throws me off, especially on the tail, because it's most of the tail. Yeah, I guess I see that. But, uh, also, the, the ear, like, when I first looked at it, I was like, what the hell, what's going on with the, the, the whole, the head, the ear? I get it now. Just like the, I think, because there's that flower in the, uh, like right in front of the ear, the mane on the front just looks really small, and that just threw me off. I guess not bad yeah, by any means. It, it looks like it may not be connected, and that's what's really weird. Yeah. Also, since the ear looks like it's kind of like back, it <laughs> it doesn't go with what I'm normally like looking for for an ear. I was like, "Where's her ear?" Oh, overall. I, She's she's really freaking cute. Her color palette is next to perfect, I guess. Now, or well, not maybe perfect because perfect is so impossible. Next, super to awesome, get. amazing. Yeah, and she's really freaking cute. And the society seems like it could be a really cool thing. Expand it. Well, maybe we will in the future with the other OC she made. Oh, <gasps> oh foreshadow. But not today, as far as I know. No. So, we're going to have to move on from that OC and into the final good OC this week, which is Commanders. So, Commander, do you want to tell us what's up with uh, your good OC this week? Okay, so, uh, 
my good OC, uh, I had actually looked at this OC uh, for other, but it turns out that they're a hybrid. So I was like, oh, well, I, I so I was like, I'm going to choose them for fan submitted. Um, this is a little tough. They're a, uh, they're, they're technically a horse, uh, donkey hybrid. You can't really tell, which is why I was confused. Anyways, um, yeah, it, it does mention that she's a, a mule. And she was born in, uh, Burros Ares. Uh, Lil Tuck is a oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, uh, Burros yeah. Ares. Yeah, uh, I, I got, I got a laugh out of it when I first read it. Um, <laughs> So she's a really feisty mule to, with pretty much, or she's like one of the feistiest that you'll pretty much ever meet. And even though she's like well, apparently a bit smaller, which a, a size comparison would be really cool. Um, you know, she's like a, well, pretty much a force to be reckoned with, as they say it. Uh, she inherited her uh, donkey father's strong kick and like general stubbornness and stuff like that. But she's also like super uh, protective of her family and friends, which was apparently a trait in uh, parted from her mom. Uh, uh, when she was younger, she had a strong sense of justice or yeah, she developed a strong sense of justice and stuff like that. And, uh, and more often than not, that would uh, put her at odds with the world around her. Um, and because the, the, she like had this strong sense of justice, she was really motivated to change the world. So she started traveling around Equestria, trying to wrong all of the right or right all the wrongs <laughs> that she saw. <laughs> she's trying to like fuck shit up, just not now. But she's um, trying to wrong all the rights in the world. <laughs> but, fuck your uh, shit. Whether she would do this through just raising awareness, or she would, or doing some like Robin Hood bullshit and stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, she did all of it with enthusiasm and without regret and kind of had a bit of a hero complex just a little bit um and uh this was or it was this tactic that brought to her to uh the border of the badlands where she encountered some zebras and ponies or where she, where she encountered zebras and ponies alike including one of particular interest which that i'm really confused about because um, it probably I mean, leads off into another character. Yeah, that probably may have, that is highly interesting. Highly entwined with this character. Yeah. Um. It it would just be nice to to like have a link or mention who the character is because it's just I it, it, that has that whole vagueness which I I, I it works and I not it's not bad but it would just be cool so I can understand the whole how it all works together. But uh. Also, the bandage on her uh, nose is actually just, it's temporary, and it was from a, like, scuffle that she got in with a uh, pretty nasty Pegasus, and it's only going to be there as long as she actually has the injury. But, uh... Okay, that's good, because I hate it when characters just wear bandages on their face forever, for no good reason. Yep, so they specifically said no, they don't. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> pretty happy about that <laughs> so uh thoughts I like the design of this character though the mix between having things with outlines and not no outlines is really bugging me a little bit just yeah. because it's the fact that it's like okay there's the mane but doesn't have an outline the ear has an outline but the neck doesn't really have an outline but the bag doesn't have an outline but the body does have an outline and there's a shading Underneath the belly, it's like, we pick a freaking style. I will love you even more if you just did it that way. Other than that, I think the coloration is great. The fact that it's a mule pony definitely uh, works well with the idea of, yeah, pastel ponies. And something that is more rooted in just regular our world. Uh, the idea of it being sort of like a... I don't know. I like the I like the accessories it has with the bag on a stick and everything, and the band you know, the bandana and the bandage as well. Even though you said it was temporary, um, the lack of a cutie mark it feels really right at home, considering that the fact that it's not a pure pony. No, but I, I I do agree with you. I, I honestly didn't really even notice the whole outlines thing, but I would because it's not something that should be terribly difficult to um, fix and stuff like that. But I would definitely recommend putting outlines on stuff because. Having lineless art is okay, but mixing lineless with lined art is, it's it's and weird gradient. for like the eyes. Yeah. 
Um, for our eyes, not the yeah. not the character's eyes. Yeah, I honestly really like this OC. I think it has a really great color palette and an, an interesting character. Um, I would just get those lines because that will just imp- like help improve the presentation. And I honestly don't really have many complaints. I really like the uh, little ear like fuzz though. It's cute. 